man, you come straight out of a comic. Welcome to Straight Out of a Comic Book. I am your host, Will Farrow. And we are here to talk about all the comic book stuff that's been going on this week from the Marvel news, movies, television shows. You know how we do. What we're doing, though, is I'm going solo dolo on the show today. Trying out something new, seeing how y'all rock with it. Going solo dolo, man. And, you know, um, just to be transparent, I always like to be transparent with my people that watch the show. Um, always kind of nervous just to have it be me. Uh, I always like to kind of share, have people be a part of stuff and everything like that. But um, sometimes, you know, just overthink a little bit and feel like, you know, you kind of turn that into a crutch a little bit. And that makes sense. You know, and you feel like, oh, OK, well, since that's what people are used to, we got to have a show like that and stuff. And it's like, no, man, this is this is your show. So go for it. Go for it by yourself. Talk your shit, and then let's see what's going. Let's see what the crowd say. But I think y'all gonna rock with it anyway. So we're gonna get this thing cracking. We got a lot to talk about today. We're gonna be talking about Deadpool and Wolverine. We got more Marvel news coming up as well. Got a couple of other things going on in TV, and then I'm gonna be giving you also my uh, top picks today. We're gonna be talking about some of the top picks and what to watch this weekend. What to watch this weekend, what to watch this week, my suggestion on what for you to check out this week. I think, you know, a lot of people always talk about, you know, like they, you know, value their opinion of how I come up with things and how, you know, like I always give reviews on certain stuff. So I was like, you know what, let's make it a thing. But uh, let's start off first with uh, talking about, of course, a, a great uh, holiday for comic book fans. And that is Star Wars Day. So it is May 4th, and may the 4th be fucking with you today. Whether you are a Jedi, whether you are a Sith, Stormtrooper, Imperial Soldier or General, uh, tech support on the Death Star, um, riding them little bikes out there on Tatooine, or you just sick of Anakin and his bullshit, happy Star Wars Day. Star Wars Day is definitely celebrated by a whole bunch of uh, uh, fans of the lore of the culture. And then uh, shout out to Shawnee that's watching this live. I appreciate that. Y'all fucking with the setup and everything like that. Uh, definitely appreciate it. You know, trying to make something work. We're going to keep it building and keep it growing uh, as we continue to be making content. So definitely appreciate that and those that have contributed to uh, the setup. So I really appreciate that. Uh, but yeah, it is May 4th. It's Star Wars Day. A um, lot of stuff has been happening with Star Wars uh, as far as from the good and the bad. You know, so we see that The Mandalorian is supposed to be having a movie coming out. Uh, bad Batch just wrapped up their uh, series finale and it was a tearjerker. A lot of, a lot of folks from uh, the, the Star Wars lore uh, were... I don't know if they were... I know, I know tears were, were had. Tears were had. I don't know if that's a good thing or if it was a bad thing. I don't know if it was happy tears or kind of mad tears, but it seems like it was a a great send off for um, the Star Wars people uh, from what I'm seeing. And from what I'm also seeing, is my hairline uneven? Wait a minute. I feel like my... Like, my, like does it... Yeah, I feel like my, I feel like my hairline off. Hmm. I mean, I gotta look into that. And it just comes with age. Sorry about that. I just caught that. I just caught that, and we live, so y'all know how I get. But um, with the Bad Batch being done, Mandalorian going into uh, season four in the movie, uh, Acolytes coming out as well. Um, it seems like. Star Wars is moving in the right direction. And by the right direction, I, I mean it's starting to go out into more than just the main characters that a majority of people are familiar with. And one thing that I really feel like Star Wars con should consistently keep doing that I think um, has been a great job is focusing on the underworld of Star Wars. So from uh, Ahsoka kind of going through her stuff, the Mandalorian, even even Boba Fett. I'm a big fan of the Boba Fett series. I don't give a fuck what nobody say. 
Um, I know it has gotten a lot of backlash, but I thoroughly enjoy Boba Fett. It felt like the wire of Star Wars. And I would love to see a second season um, turn, turn it up. Like, turn it up. Like, I know it was just a tad bit on the slow side. Turn that stuff up, man. I want to see cocaine being sold. Whatever they call cocaine in the Star Wars uh, universe, I want to see that. I want to see the drugs being sold. Like, the underworld has so much that can be explored in Star Wars. I really feel like they should focus on that. Like, especially, like, with the with the uh, new video game that they're coming out, the open world, uh, Star Wars Outlaws. Like, make that the focus now of these shows. Even some of these movies, if you're going to start coming out with movies again. Um, but if you don't, I, I particularly prefer stick with the Star Wars lineup. Like, continue that full Star Wars story as the movies and give me shows that focus on the other world. Oh, you know, and, and, and like uh, Tetsuya uh, on the live uh, uh, stated, they move Spice, kind of like the movie Dunes. They move Spice. Man, I want to see Spice being moved. I want to see those trades happening, man. I want to see more than just, you know, uh, 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 Jabba the Hutt's gang and stuff like that. Like, show me all of the underworld of Star Wars. You know what I'm saying? Like, you have a great chance for us to really see a lot of those things come to life. And I, I really hope that, like, from looking from the different perspective of, like, the acolytes, from looking at, you know, the Siths and everything, from really just getting from these main characters we know and giving us the, the lifeblood of the universe. Like, what is the trades of the universe? How does everything work? Give You know, and, and for myself, I know a lot of people may, may not agree with this and stuff. I want to see more of the political royal hierarchy side of Star Wars. I want to know how the Republic works. I want to know how the Imperials work. Like, could you imagine a house of cards, but Star Wars? Could you, could you imagine that a house of style, a house of cards, a uh, TV show? Where you have someone who is now trying to be the assistant to the uh, Imperial King. You know, uh, uh, oh man, I always forget his name. Uh, you know, uh, Execute Order 66. Uh, him, uh, uh, Palpatine. I'm sure Pal well, Palpatine is not around no more, but like their high ruler. I would love to see a political drama focused around Star Wars. You know, I've seen it from, uh, like, and you see like little pieces in it. But just imagine the political side of Star Wars. I just think you have so many options that you could do. Like even to the point of, um, um, even from the point of what is it? Um, racing. Give me a Fast and Furious. You know what I'm saying? Give me a Fast and Furious Star Wars. You know what I'm saying? You can tell, yeah, and, and you know, like to 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 the fans in the, in the chat, like they said, uh, you there's so many stories that could be told in Star Wars. Like you've done a great job of creating a galaxy far, far away. Give me more of the galaxy. Give me new planets that y'all talk about in the books and stuff. Like, give me more of that. I don't even mind you getting away from Jedi. I don't need a show that always shows a Jedi. If I'm just being honest, you could give me a full show where no Jedis are represented at all. Unless it's like, you know, if you're doing a political thing, you got to go talk to the high console, stuff like that. But I don't always need to see a lightsaber in the show at all. That's all I'm saying. And, you know, I, and if I offend some Star Wars people, hey, you know, then sharpen some pencils and fall on them. But that's my opinion. And I feel like that would be a great way to expand the Star Wars universe. You know, kind of like, uh, you know, like uh, uh, Tetsuya just threw out uh, Rebel Moon. Rebel Moon, I, I like Rebel Moon. I think it is kind of still a little slow. Um, I know Snyder is kind of banking on the... I'm going to have another movie, so let me pace this out. Uh, but I am still curious just to see what's going to happen, what's going to come of that. But yeah, I would love to, I would love to see more from uh, Star Wars as far as like the open world of it. 
And so, uh, as we're talking about Star Wars, because this is May 4th, I wanted to give y'all some, you know, did you know type of facts, if, if you will. So, as a part of May the 4th be with you, I'm going to give you three did you knows Star Wars facts. Fact number one, the word Ewok is actually never spoken in any of the Star Wars films. Isn't that crazy? We all know about the cute, cuddly, and, and furry Ewoks and whatnot. But, and, and you would think you would have heard this, but if you really look back, no one has ever used the word Ewoks in the actual movie itself. The word does appear in the final credits of Return of the Jedi, but no one actually ever uses the term Ewok in the actual movies. If you don't believe me, today is a great day for you to have a seat. Watch the entire Star Wars from the Phantom Menace all the way to the new ones where they didn't let the black guy become a Jedi. Go check it out and then tell me if I'm wrong. But yeah, the word Ewok is never used within the film. Um, another, did you not know? Oh, excuse me. Or another did you know fact? And I don't know if this one might blow y'all mind because I know this one blew my mind. Tupac Shakur actually auditioned to play the role of Mace Windu. That is right. Uh, reportedly, the uh, uh, from the former chief engineer of Death Row, uh, he actually read for George Lucas and wanted to play a Jedi. And the Jedi that they did have in mind for him to play was going to be Mace Windu. Now, unfortunately, because his death, it eventually did go to, of course, Samuel L. Jackson, who did a tremendous job as Mace Windu, who I think is still alive. Who I think is still alive. Just throwing that out there. I think he's still alive. That's just me. But just imagine Tupac Shakur with a purple lightsaber saying, may the force be with you. I'm going to just let that imagery sit there. <laughs> and then just with all these beefs, it just, <laughs> just imagine his shit. Imagine if Mace Windu made a diss record. First off, fuck you clicking the Imperials you claim. Dark side, when we ride, coming quick with game. <clears throat> you claim to be a Sith, but I fucked your wife. Don't, don't mind me. Don't mind me and don't judge me. <laughs> oh, man. Just imagine it with a saber. West side, you already know how we ride. <laughs> Representing that Tatooine. <laughs> oh, shit, man. Oh, yeah, bro. Oh, okay. And, of course, um... Our third, our third, did you know? <laughs> our third, did you know? Um, and this one kind of blew my mind. Um, and I don't know if y'all ready for this. So the third one, E.T. is actually canon in the Star Wars universe, kind of, okay? Uh, so not the original E.T., but his actual species which is the uh Asagonians uh I could be saying that wrong so forgive me but um they are represented within the galactic senate and they actually first appeared in the phantom menace so his actual people that ET comes from is lore in the Star Wars universe so that means our earth is actually so it we actually could somewhat have been in the Star Wars universe in the E.T. movie. I just want y'all to contemplate that for a second. <laughs> so that is just very wild to me that um, that he was actually a part, that his species, excuse me, is a part of the Star Wars universe. And just to show you just how vast and how dope George Lucas has made a, a piece of, uh, you know, culture for us within this Star Wars. So, you know, as I've said, uh, just may the fourth be with you. Happy Star Wars Day. I hope that you were swinging lightsabers, putting on Stormtrooper masks, hitting people with the... And just enjoying your day as a Star Wars fan because you deserve it. 
Um, but we're going to move on now. We're about to jump into some Marvel news. It's time for that good old Marvel. All right. Now, we all excited for Deadpool uh, and Wolverine, which was originally supposed to drop this week. Uh, the original release date was set for May 3rd. So it actually is supposed to be out right now. But, you know, we still got to wait two months. But hey. From the stuff we've seen in the trailers, seeing Wolverine in the iconic suit, uh, I don't mind waiting another two months just because I know Ryan Reynolds is going to deliver something great with the third installment to the Deadpool franchise. So I'm not pissed about it. I'm just excited to see it. And I can't wait till I believe July 26 for it to come out. Um, and as Hugh Jackman has stated, being in the suit just feels right. And I'm glad that he did it. I'm glad that he did come back. Um, don the suit apparently is going to don the cowl as well they haven't shown it yet but apparently he's going to have on the face mask as well um and, and, and to uh, the fans point uh i'm glad that it's stretched out because we you know i feel we have experienced superhero fatigue and now i am kind of feeling more um in the word like kids say thirsty for a superhero movie. They've been doing a great job with the cartoons and stuff like that. But I like that Marvel did take a break, try to regroup themselves to try to get everything right and situated so it is best for the fans. Um, but something I did find interesting with uh, Wolverine, and uh, well, Deadpool and Wolverine, excuse me. One thing I found interesting was something that recently was released in uh, the fact of Kevin Feige had once stated that he told Hugh Jackman he didn't want him to return as Wolverine, um, which isn't very shocking. And just to give context, uh, the reason why he had stated that was because of the success of Logan, he had one of probably the probably the top three best endings for a superhero. Okay, you got your you got your Iron Man with you know doing the the, the snap and uh, finally you know saving everybody and kind of you know in a way fixing his wrong. Um, and then of course from Logan, you know being one of course one of the one of the top actors to have played a, a comic book character for so long for over a decade. Uh, I think probably almost close to knocking on 10 now if we're being oh, well, over over 20, excuse me, over 20 if we're talking about it. Um, but to hold records for that and then to have such a phenomenal ending to this Wolverine character uh, with Logan, uh, Kevin Feige kind of had a point with not returning and not being, you know, re, you know, revising the character anymore because you gave it a great ending. Like it didn't need to come back. Um, but I will say if, you know, we always talk about the, what if someone comes back, same thing we did with back with the whole Tony Stark thing. Like if Tony Stark comes back, which, um, if he does, it just needs to be in secret wars in some kind of way or presence and everything like that. It doesn't need to be at a full capacity. Like, uh, Robert Downey Jr.'s Iron Man was a perfect portrayal and it had the best ending. Let him lay let him lie where he is but for wolverine we did have some things that we we wish we would have saw and we are getting that and, and it just really goes to show you too comic book superhero suits are everything like we wanted it for the suit alone like the fact of yo just because we get one more chance to see him in the suit we don't mind you coming back and i think they picked a great way for him to come back, which is to do Deadpool and Wolverine because of how much the Deadpool character has mentioned him, how many Easter eggs that he's thrown in there about him. I think this is when you give that, that one per that one exception kind of like they've been trying to find with like Chris Evans, Captain America and how he could come back. You always had that one exception that works well. And you know, uh, Chris Evans said if it was written right, he would return. But that is kind of a difficult thing to do with certain characters. But I think in Wolverine's case, they found a very great way to have him come back. And just from the trailers that we've seen, um, I'm excited. I'm excited for it. And then uh, just because of the history that, you know, Kevin Feige and Hugh Jackman has had as playing this character, it uh, says a lot about him. Like, as you can see in the image uh 
to my right, you know, that's Kevin Feige on the original set of X-Men from uh, the X-Men live action movie in 2000 with uh, Fox, uh, Century Fox. Uh, so he's been a part of the Marvel live action uh, MCU in a way since, you know, even damn near since its beginning. Like even to the point where, um, you know, at the time, the director, I don't know if it was Ryan, uh, uh, Brian or Ryan Singer on the first one. I can't remember at, the t uh, at this time right now. But one of the things on set was they didn't want them reading any of the comic books. No comic books. Need, uh, they didn't want them to read it. They didn't want that lore. Uh, Kevin Feige would sneak comic books to uh, Hugh Jackman so he could learn a little bit more about the character of Wolverine. And so I just, you know, the history that they have with one another, it runs so deep and it's just to show like how much input and how much dedication has been given to this Wolverine character. Uh, it just, it's just, you know, like roses have to be given and I can see why Kevin Feige would feel the way he felt about, you know, like, you know, you don't have to return. And I, and I felt the same way, but I am glad to see him back uh, in just his particular case. But I would like to see more versions of different actors playing these characters. So it's like, yo, give me someone playing a different Iron Man. Give me someone that is going to play a different Wolverine moving into the future. Like the fans say, the multiverse saga is the perfect excuse to recast the characters. And it should be. It needs to be recast, but don't bring it back with just with these same people. They've done what they needed to do for that particular universe. Um, and I feel the same way with Logan's, uh, with Hugh Jackman's Wolverine. If this is the last time we see Wolverine again, then I am fully okay with that, with the exception of maybe seeing him in Battle World uh, one last time. But it's like, um, I, I'm okay with this because at least it gives us a chance to see Hugh Jackman within the MCU that we see today not you know being a part of a different universe that's connected to it the actual MCU seeing him interact with current MCU characters I that's the only reason why I'm glad to see him coming back along with the suit um, because he deserves that because of how much work that he's put into that and we are going to keep it uh, moving with X-Men news and we are going to be talking about X-Men not a seven. As my nephew liked to say, X-Man 97. Whoo! Listen. Now, this is a spoiler for those that have not watched the recent X-Man 97 episode, which is Tolerance uh, is Extinction Part 1. Let me tell you something. When they tell you a black person can cook, they was cooking with this episode, man. They were cooking with this episode. I yo, I the fact we only got two more episodes left scares me. Scares me because I want more. I need more. And I don't know what's about to happen within these next two. Um just to give like a brief of course a brief overview um We've come to find out that Bastion was the uh, person behind the uh, Genosha massacre um, that happened in, I think, two episodes before, um, has had Magneto uh, held up and captured. Not a clone, as we, you know, as I, I may have thought in the last episode, not a clone, real Magneto uh, and stuff like that. So appreciate it uh, for, for those that, you know, didn't called me a jackass for thinking that it was like, well, it was a theory it was, it's my hear me out so it's like hey man don't don't, don't judge me don't judge don't judge what i throw out i i thought it i saw something and thought of it so there you go but magneto's captured and it seems like there is a plan and uh there is a plan that it that um bastion has which is basically to make the x-men look so bad that the world needs the Sentinel program and then thus somewhat enslaving the mutant species into building humans a better tomorrow. But like if you, if the correlations between real life and this show is insane. Yo, 
the thought. So the whole outlook to get of Bastion is not to destroy X Men, to enslave mutant kind to make your world better for you as a human and then by giving humans powers <laughs> i was like yo this sounds like something that came from a machine and for those that don't know um they they did slightly alter bastion's um bastion's origin just uh, just a little bit um but bastion is the fusion of nimrod from the previous episodes in the old x-men 97 before it uh was rebooted and brought back and then um master mold that you saw from the first episode that the x-men fought together uh is a combination of those two uh put together and made bastion and bastion is someone who can talk to technology can control technology and is really doing a good job at kicking these cats asses uh right now but what I love about seeing about this episode is how much it sets up. Uh, one to know Bastion is not by himself, but also working along some of the, the best villains in Marvel from uh, um, Dr. Doom, from uh, the uh, I always uh, Zemo. I don't know why I wanted to call him Baron, uh, but from Zemo and so many others who are with him in this takeover is just that so like that right there just that small piece but even to uh baron zemo that's what it is it, it is baron zemo i was like i kept knowing like i was like and i was gonna i was gonna say baron davis and i was like well we know it's not that mr sinister to see like all of these people are together with him to make this happen it's just like yo what the fuck is going on and then to see from the previous episode uh, Rogue interacting with Captain America and him saying, well, I still have to connect with my team, letting us know that, hey, the Avengers exist in this universe. And then to see all the cameos from Omega Red, to see Spider-Man, which I just, I, I gotta say, I loved seeing the Spider-Man cameo. And I'm about to say something that it, it is maybe an unpopular opinion. I love the resurgence of X-Men 97 do not need a Spider-Man 98. I said it. I said it. I said it. I know people are about to be very pissed off about it. Um, I don't think we need a Spider-Man animated series reboot. I think that they ended it very well. And you should leave it where it's at. X-Men 97 had a reason to come back. But if you think about how Spider-Man ended, you don't necessarily need to bring that back. At all. Like, we've seen way, we've seen so much, if you really think about it. Like, we've seen Spider-Man fight all his villains. We've seen him do Secret Wars. Secret Wars was in Spider-Man the Animated Series. We even saw Civil War. We saw the Multiversal War. In Spider-Man, what else do you want to see Spider-Man do in the animated series? We even saw him break fourth wall and meet Stan Lee and swing around with Stan Lee. Like, I just don't know what you do to continue that story. And I get the nostalgia part of it. I do understand the nostalgia part of it, but some things you can just let lie. And I feel like Spider-Man, the animated series is one of those. Now, I will say, I don't mind seeing him come back in cameos for X-Men 97. I would love to see him work with them. But I don't need them to bring this back. Like, there's not enough questions, unanswered questions that deal with them trying to bring this back. Even with the whole, like, Mary Jane thing. Like, did Mary Jane really die? Like, what happened to Mary Jane? I give a fuck what happened to Mary Jane. If I'm just being honest. Mary Jane is a succubus, all right? She is the anchor to Spider-Man. She be holding him back, all right? Ah, that's just my opinion, man. He should have ended up with Felicia Hardy, but he didn't got with Mary Jane's punk ass who be getting in the shit she don't need to be getting into. And that's why she is disappearing and she didn't get the first 48. But besides that, 
what other questions are there to answer? And it's like to to, to kind of spin a, a web, uh, no pun intended, into that story of, you know, the, the, the Hydra Man clone and all of that stuff with Mary Jane. It's just, it's not enough for me to say, hey, bring this show back. You ended that show well enough to where it's like you can leave it there, but just give us cameos in X-Men 97. Let us see him work together with them and then give us like an updated New York. And then maybe, just maybe, we could get a resurgence of the animated series. But as of right now, with how things have went and how they ended it, I don't necessarily feel like a reboot or a continuation, I don't like really calling it a reboot, but a continuation of the series needs to happen like X-Men 97. But X-Men 97 uh, is doing a great job uh, as well, uh, carrying this whole year for us. For 2024, X-Men is holding down Marvel, especially with like Craven the Hunter being pushed back. I believe it was supposed to come out this year. I believe it's pushed back to next year now. Um, I'm not sure if Venom is still coming out this year. I believe it was also pushed back. So, you know, as far as our superhero type of um, feed that we need, X-Men 97 has really been holding it down. Um, Deadpool will hold down the summer. If we can maybe get one more superhero thing, it doesn't have to be from Marvel exactly, but if we can get one more thing to be held down superhero-wise within the fall, we should be good. Just don't make fucking Madam Web ever again. Don't you ever make that basic bitch film again. Ever. And this ain't even, this ain't got nothing to do with the actors or anything like that because they didn't know what the fuck was going on either. Ain't nobody, I'm letting you know now, nobody here on this show is pissed off at Dakota Johnson, uh, the Sweeney girl, and the other two. No one's mad at y'all. We not mad at y'all. I'm not putting that on y'all. I'm putting that on Sony. I'm putting that pe- that on the people that wrote this stuff and the people that decide to approve and put that bullshit out. You ought to be a fucking shame of yourself. Go find a flight of stairs and do a tumble roll on all of them until you fucking can't get up no more. Because that was some bullshit. That made Morbius look like an Oscar winning movie. I cannot believe they did Madam Webb and then has, here's my problem. Do you know what it is too? Madam Webb did the same thing the director of X-Men tried to do. Madam Webb would have been a great thriller movie if you took all the Spider-Man lore out of it. If you would have made Dakota Johnson's character a clairvoyant person who has certain, like, abilities like super strength and stuff like that to see what's coming from a madman that's trying to take these people out and even still use the original story you were going to use which was uh Ezel's character Ezekiel whatever the fuck his name was that uh that great value version of Spider-Man um having him come back to dest- to, to kill off the Toby Maguire Spider-Man's parents so that Spider-Man is never born That was the original story that was supposed to happen. And they were supposed to be protecting Peter uh, and and having allowing Peter to be born. But for some reason, they didn't do that. And how the fuck you going to have three spider women in here that that, that don't never dress up as spider women or use their powers? The shit you saw in the trailer, that was it. And it was a glimpse. It was a prediction in the future of what they going to be. None of these women became Spider Woman. What was the point of calling this Madam Web if you are not going to use any of the lure correctly or even include it in the movie? You just should have made it a psychological thriller and that would have been great. Because even the dude that was dressed as the Pepperidge Farm Spider-Man could have still had that suit. He could have still kept that suit on and still been the villain. That was the problem of trying to entangle comic book lore into these movies that don't need to be entangled like that. And then first off, Madam Web don't need no damn movie. 
Madam Webb don't need no fucking movie. First of all, we don't even know a young Madam Webb. We know the old Madam Webb from the animated series. Why are you giving us a 30-year-old something, Madam Webb, who can fucking see? What is going on? Sony, you messed up with that one. And I, and I feel the same thing with Craven the Hunter, man. Like, y'all trying to make Craven this, this, this new thing with powers and the heart of a lion, and now he running around like a thundercat and shit like that. Man, this is why y'all need to give up them rights, Sony, and give that shit back to Marvel. You need to put put it back in Kevin Feige's hand because we sick of this shit. Or hire me so I can show y'all how it need to be done and whatnot because y'all fucking this up, all right? But you know what they're not fucking up? X-Men 97. I cannot wait for part two and part three, uh, episode nine and 10. Uh, and then that, that'll be the, the first season. We don't know if a season two is coming back. We did hear, you know, like the creator of the show, well, the showrunner uh, was let go. He was fired uh, from the show. I'm not sure um, if the rumors are true that because he had an OnlyFans, so it violated like the contract that he has with Marvel. It wasn't over nothing. Uh, supposedly that's what it was, that it just, it violated his contract and that's why they had to let him go. Um, so that's another reason why, but we'll see. I, I hope to have another season too. Cause if you leave me off like that, I will cancel my Disney plus subscription. I'm gonna cut it back on in like a month, but I'm, I'm gonna cancel it just, you know, just for the principal sake of it. I'll cut it back on though. Uh, but shout out to everybody that is watching this, uh, live. We do this live now. I'm doing it solo dolo. Um, if y'all do like it, um, in the chat, please let me know if y'all liking the solo dolo episode straight out of a comic book. Um, and I, and I will, I will keep it rocking. We'll have, we'll have people on here and stuff for different episodes. Of course, we're not getting rid of it, but you know, just for the sake of doing it by myself and kind of getting out that shell of like, Hey, I'm kin enough. Okay. And I need that hoodie cause I am kin enough and that and nobody made me feel like that. That's just me and up in here and stuff like that. So if y'all enjoying the show, let me know in the comments below. Let me know in the chat as well. Really appreciate it. But excited to see if we get a season two of X-Men and then looking forward to it. Um, more Marvel news to come up is uh, Thor. So uh, recently in an interview, um, appreciate that King Mike Hall. Appreciate that. Um, in a recent interview, Chris Hemsworth has stated that he will, uh, he did feel a type of way that um, in Thor Love and Thunder, he kind of made turn Thor into a parody of the character and does feel some type of way about it. Actually kind of was beating himself up about where the character went within the last film. Um, and just like, you know, kind of turning this, you know, iconic character into a parody of himself and kind of making him into this cartoon like character in the fourth installment of Thor. Um, he's absolutely right. Uh, you turn Thor into a fucking joke. Not not gonna say you, but uh, T.T. Waikiki, whatever the fuck his name is, uh, the dude that, that you, you remember them drinks in the dollar store? Every time they say his name, I think about that one. Y'all remember that? If you remember the dollar store, the punch that had the little uh, Islander mask on it, the fruit punch, and that's what his name, Takiki Wahidi. Uh, that's what his name, Takiki Wahidi Punch. Uh, that's what I always think of when they say his name. But I get where they were going with uh, Thor, Love, and Thunder. It was a homage to like Saturday morning cartoons. While that was cool, it did kind of stray away from the origin of Thor and what Thor did. Tiki Punch, that's what the fuck it is. Tiki Punch. Thank you, King Mike Hall. Tiki Punch is what it's called. Um, it did kind of stray away from Endgame's Thor and his storyline. But I do not agree with Chris Hemsworth and in, in feeling bad of that he let us down or that he really turned it into a crappy character. I don't agree with that. I do not agree with that. I actually agree with Robert Downey Jr. is what he said. You gave us a great journey with the Thor character with what you had to work with. So, and let me break this down when it does come to Thor. Thor was definitely a character that went through a lot of changes throughout Marvel. 
and not not just for the sake of story and character wise, but kind of trying to figure out how do you portray Thor within the MCU. So, for example, if we're looking at Thor, Thor one and Thor two, Thor one and Thor two was more of a Shakespearean old school type of feel to it. You know what I'm saying? They kind of really went like into the lore of Norse mythology. Even with the jokes that they had between him and Natalie Portman and him and uh, uh, Kat Denning's character, um, I think I'm saying her last name wrong, so excuse me, but um, her character, even that banter was how you would think a Norse god or Asgardian would respond to those jokes. Thus giving him this kind of Shakespearean type of appeal. I am Thor, Odin's son, and thou hast come to the nine realms to defend thee. Like, that was the feel. But this was at a time the MCU hadn't given us how they wanted to establish the universe outside of Earth. Not the MCU itself, but the galaxy and space itself. We didn't know how space, they hadn't developed how space culture really was like with guardians of the galaxy like guardians of the galaxy really took you through the universe of marvel and to see like how marvel's like different planets are different galaxies are but they hadn't really established that yet so thor was really kind of going off of just his planet just him and and asgard so we didn't really have a chance to develop that then guardians of the galaxy dropped and they changed the outlook um for the entire uh, space, the entire universe. So now it had this more colorful feel. It was a little more lighthearted. Um, it showed the different personalities of different people. And that kind of went against now what Thor originally was. So now you have to kind of reshape Thor a little bit. You have to reshape Asgard a little bit to kind of have that humor, but that old type of royalty type of feel. So that's why I kind of fell short with Thor too. And then, you know, with the way they had now changed up the universe to kind of like, you know, match with Guardians of the Galaxy, then you get Thor Ragnarok. And so now, you know, Thor Ragnarok matches not only the galaxy, but actually kind of matches the the humor and how people act within the same way you saw with Guardians of the Galaxy. And then you switch Thor to be able to match the galaxy now and walk us through a good amount of how that would change him, him adapting to Earth, him adapting to the ways of how that goes, him being a, li a little bit more funny instead of him just having that Drax type of humor. At first, that's what it was. Thor kind of had that Drax type of humor that made him funny, but then he was able to be able to crack jokes. You were able to see more of the confidence of the God of Thunder being able to be funny and having interactions with like Rocket or having interactions with Quill and stuff like that. And it, it followed the look of the MCU a lot more. And the way that you've told Thor's story from beginning to now, before we get to Thor Love and Thunder, was incredible and i don't think chris hemsworth has anything to be ashamed of even with thor love and thunder because i still think thor love and thunder was a good film it wasn't great but it wasn't no clusterfuck or anything like that i just think that it leaned into one side a little bit too much and that's what took it away and i'm gonna give a great example of that but uh in just a second but to go from and as guardian prince who loses everything and is thrown into a realm in which he really knows nothing about from going from that to losing his half brother, losing his father, battles after battle, in game, not killing Thanos and the snap happening, him losing Asgard, you know, and, you know, flip Asgard to Thanos, but to go through all of this. And then to still come out to where you can laugh and to not be fully tainted about it. And even too, to the point of like trying to figure out what do I do now? Chris, you gave us an incredible character, especially for somebody that ain't really like someone we truly fully fuck with like that in the comic books. Like Thor is dope as fuck. Don't get me wrong, but ain't nobody was clocking for Thor like that. We wasn't clocking for Thor. Chris Hemsworth, man, you made Thor 
into a dope character just like Robert Downey did with Iron Man. You put them up there to the level of being a fan favorite like a Spider-Man, like a Wolverine. You did that, sir. And I hope you, I hope, I mean, again, I don't know if you ever going to see this, but please rest assured that you are the reason, one of the main reasons why we are Thor fans, why we like reading the comic books even more now, why the reason why Loki became such a fan favorite too, it is because of you, Chris Hemsworth, that you made this a phenomenal character. It is okay that Love and Thunder may not have lived up to Ragnarok, may not have lived up to the original one, but don't ever feel like you did us wrong portraying the character of Thor. Love and Thunder was kind of like Grown Ups 2. Grown Ups with Adam Sandler, Chris Rock, and all of them. That's what it was. Grown Ups, the original Grown Ups was great. The premise was great. The sequel leaned too hard in trying to make it funny. And that was the problem. It became Grown Ups 2 became this thing of like, okay, we have to throw this little thing in here. We have to throw these little things in here. We have to go a little bit over. They lean too hard into trying to make it funny rather than just writing out a dope story and having these phenomenal comedic actors make it funny. That's where they messed up. You leaned into one thing a little too hard and it took away the essence of what made the movie good. And so that's the same thing that happened with uh, with Love and Thunder. It leaned a little too hard into the comedy. Um, and that's what took away its original essence. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not comparing Grown Ups 2 to, to Love and Thunder and stuff like that. Like, like Grown Ups 2 was way better than Love and Thunder. But it doesn't hold the same, like, heartwarming movie feel like Grown Ups 1. You could feel like in Grown Ups 2, you were trying to look for a laugh. You were trying to give us a laugh rather than letting the laughs come organically. And that's what really uh, showed in that movie. You, instead of just trying to, you tried to be funny and that's where you messed up. Same thing with Love and Thunder. You try to lean into this a little too hard with the colors, with the humor and stuff because we found Thor funny. Thor is very funny. But y'all tried to do too much of it to make it funny. And especially with the story that y'all were using, you should have leaned more into the seriousness of it rather than trying to make it a comical god that's dealing with a very messed up situation, which is why the god butcher didn't hit the way it needed to hit. Why Jane's story didn't hit the way it needed to hit. Like you should have found a good measure of the, the aesthetic of the first Thor movie and uh, what made Thor Ragnarok great and then find that middle and to give us Thor Love and Thunder. And I think it would have given us a better product um, rather than what we did receive. But again, to, to Chris Hemsworth case, please uh, don't ever think that you did Thor dirty or we look at you of doing Thor dirty. You gave us a phenomenal performance and gave that character everything it needed and i'm giving you your flowers just like robert downing jr said as well man bravo to you you are a a, a a hero to that and we definitely appreciate it so um but we're gonna move from the marvel news right now we're gonna come back to it in a little bit um but i want to definitely get into some some more television we still kind of jumping into the C, uh, superhero thing but um the boys the boys are back in town. Boys are back in town. A new trailer for the boys just dropped for season four. Uh, man. And it didn't disappoint. It didn't disappoint. It's still the blood, violence, gratuity, nudity, everything that we needed, man. Let me tell you something, man. June is about to be ridiculous for television. Like, we are, when I tell you, we are eating this summer. We are eating this summer. I'm telling you, like, I don't think, a lot of people ain't going to be outside because we're going to be too busy being in the fucking house. We're going to be too busy trying to catch up on shows. It's like, nigga, I don't need no summer body. I'm in the house. You know how much shit coming out this, 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 this summer? Banger after banger after banger after banger is dropping. Come on, man. But uh, the boy boys just dropped the trailer for season four. Uh, well, second second trailer. Um, 
and, and I'm excited. Uh, I'm not sure if this is the final season or not. That hasn't been confirmed uh, at all. But from the trailer, um, I'm not going to show it because this does go on YouTube. And I don't want to mess up my monetization with it. So I'm not going to show the trailer in here. Uh, but from what the trailer did reveal, uh, if you haven't seen it, and this is a spoiler. So if you haven't seen it, uh, please skip. Uh, to the next topic but um, it seems like Butcher is on a last line uh, doesn't look like he has a long time to go um, Homelander is gonna be president as well we also saw some of the uh, cats from Gen V in there as well and uh, RIP to the cat from uh, from the Gen V spinoff man um, definitely gone too soon, man. An incredible actor. I'm sorry that I can't think of his name right now, just off the top of my head, but he played in, uh, also Sabrina, the teenage witch, a uh, reboot on Netflix, uh, a phenomenal performer and, um, very sad to see him, uh, pass away. He passed away in a motorcycle accident, I believe two months ago. Um, and just, you know, just, you know, messed up to see someone so young lose their life and be taken so quickly. Um, so I'm not sure how they're going to spend that in the show itself, but, uh, we did see some of the JV kids in the trailer. Um, it looks like it's now developing into a civil war between folks who are with Homelander and people who are more against the whole soups thing and using Starlight as the face for it. Um, new seven members are coming through and it looks like they're, you know, the 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 crazies are running the asylum and unfortunately this asylum is a billion dollar tr maybe trillion dollar corporation that they have at their disposal so the boys got a lot against them they do have the public we know we have political figures that are tipping in and out of which side that they're going to be on i just think it's going to add to another phenomenal season of the boys of the boys series and um i can't wait to see exactly where we pick up what's about to happen and and where they're going to leave us um i i do wish oh matter of fact i'm so sorry no I just now realized this is not the final season because they did actually uh, state that, that this one would lead into Gen Z season two and then season two leads into season five of the boys. So they're actually going to bounce back from one another. So we will get another season of the boys. Um, this isn't the final season just yet. I, I do remember uh, them stating that uh, uh, earlier when the first trailer dropped. So I do look forward to see what Butcher and the crew is going to bring uh, against the soups and just what the soups are now acting like now that they don't have anyone to monitor them and that the CEO is pretty much under Homelander's thumb. So it's going to be interesting. Um, I would love for them to drop it all at one time, but I know they're not going to do that. Um, they're going to give us this week to week bullshit. And have us waiting each day, and I, I guess that's, I guess that's fine, I guess that's fine. But maybe Amazon will take a cue from Fallout and give us the entire thing at one time. So, fingers crossed that it happens. That it happens. So, um, but now we're gonna jump into uh, my pick of the week. So. Uh, this is a segment where I actually tell y'all uh, a show or a movie that, that is out or coming out that you should check out and see. And uh, today's uh, pick is going to be none other than the Paramount special Knuckles. Knuckles just came out uh, this previous week. It dropped April 26th. Uh, I think, it, uh, you know, it's been out for a week now. Um, I love this series i will say it does have its um fall fall moments a little bit just because they kind of focus on characters outside of knuckles i just want to state that first just trying to get the bad out the way um and then we, we surprise with the good but that's really it all in all knuckles is a great family type of comedy um I love that they threw Knuckles into continuing the story after Sonic 2 and keeping him in that realm and showing him adapting to the world, not putting such a big strain on building this to Sonic 3. 
it's like a great in between of just showing us like, yo, like, okay, now that Knuckles is here, what is Knuckles up to? Showing how Knuckles is adapting to being on Earth. Showing how Knuckles is adapting to actually having friends and helping people. Uh, I love his character. I love Idris Elba talking as Knuckles. They give a great job at showing his personality of, of being in the kid in the warrior um kid cuddy does a great job as one of the villains um just one thing i just i i will say i wasn't a fan of that the, i felt like the villains weren't shown enough like i feel like you know like because of i don't want to give too much away but they i, I think they had a, a little bit of an issue finding the balance between knuckle story and then uh the guy story that he's following making this a kind of to a uh a buddy film and a buddy show and stuff like that which was okay but i would have preferred more of it um lean on to knuckles story and being chased by these bad guys rather than trying to fulfill um what's his face's um storyline and everything though the storyline is still cool um, I would have preferred it to have been a little bit more on to Knuckles rather than Knuckles adapting to Weeble's story. So, um, but besides that though, it is a great show. It's six episodes. It's 30 minutes. You can, you can knock it out in a day on a nice Saturday like this. I don't know if it's cloudy in the area that y'all are in, but it's cloudy right now over here. Great time to, to, to get in the bed, jump on the bean bag, get your favorite food or snack or anything like that. And check out Knuckles. Um, that is my pick for a watch for this week. Check it out. Let me know how you feel about it. And I think it helps you get prepared for when Sonic 3 drops. You know, Shadow is in the next film. And he's voiced by Keanu Reeves. So, ooh, pardon me. So, I don't know how you drop the ball with Sonic 3 when you got just line up like that. So, check out Knuckles. It's on Paramount+. Plus. As I said, 30-minute show. Can knock it out real quick. You get a great laugh. If you're a fan of the video game, great nostalgia within the game uh, uh, from the game within the show. It is a, a overall good show, and I'll give it a solid seven or eight out of ten. Good solid show. More 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 in the lines of a seven. I'll say seven, just so I'm not, you know, like this. I'll say a seven. I give it a good seven out of ten. But check out Knuckles. Oh, uh, and then let me know exactly what you think. And uh, last but not least, we are getting into another segment that I like to call my um, my top five. My top five for right now. I'll probably give it a different name, but uh, I want to get into my top five list. Um, and that is me just giving you my hear me outs. So it's my hear me out top five. Now, if you've been watching the blurred news and everything like that, we now know that Gene Carlo Esposito is now a part of the MCU. Now, it has not been revealed who he will be portraying within the MCU, but we do know he has officially joined the MCU family. And so for myself and for the uh, Shroud of a Comic Book fans, I want to give you my top five selections of who? Giancarlo Esposito could play in the MCU. And I want to start this off first, okay? I want to start this off first, so don't nobody get it twisted. I do not want Giancarlo playing Dr. Charles Xavier. I said it. I said it. I do not think he should play Charles Xavier, okay? I am all for diversifying characters. These are all fictional characters, so we do understand that. I have no problem with redefining characters, but there are just some characters you do not change, okay? Now, for the sense of, for example, Captain America. Captain America is cool to change because Captain America is a moniker. So anybody could take on the moniker of Captain America as we saw with Sam Wilson. But now for someone like a Magneto, who is based off of being a Holocaust survivor, who can manipulate metal, I don't want to see that story change because that is a origin of this character. 
whose just name, his alias happens to be Magneto. So I don't really want to see that changed. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, even with people that are saying that they want to see Denzel play Magneto, it's like, so what? We see them going through the civil rights movement, getting beat up by the police, and then he has magnetic powers. It's like, okay, but that's not the character that we're used to. And it's like to have to redefine all of that and change all of that, I don't necessarily agree with that. Same thing with Charles. So it's just like how Charles had to move about to even meet Eric is a whole different thing. You have to really literally rewrite all of X-Men in order uh, for Giancarlo playing Xavier to make sense. Because just think about from first class, he would have never had the access Charles Xavier had. He would have never been spoken to the way Charles Xavier was spoken to. He would have literally needed to manipulate the entire world in order for him to move about the way that he moved about. You also have to now redefine where he comes from money-wise. How did he get all of this money? Where does it come from? There's too many points within Charles Xavier's story that you would have to alter in order for this to make sense. And I'm just, I'm just not a fan of them altering those two. I don't mind some of these things being altered. Even the Spider-Man. I'm not necessarily saying like Spider-Man need to be recast, but I can see it. But for Charles, I just don't, I don't necessarily agree with him playing that. So I'm going to give you my top five people I think that Giancarlo could play within the MCU. Now, this isn't in no particular order of my top pick to my, my, my fifth pick. It is just, uh, just a random order. My first one, Brother uh, uh, Voodoo. Brother Voodoo. I could definitely, I mean, I'm sorry, or Dr. Voodoo, depending on how you want to go about it. I could see Giancarlo playing uh, Brother Voodoo. Well, yeah, we're going to go by Dr. Voodoo. Uh, uh, playing Dr. Voodoo. I could see Giancarlo playing Dr. Voodoo. Uh, just because of the, the scope that he is, he's been affiliated with the Avengers. He's also affiliated with having to fight Dracula, so that brings in the whole Blade aspect as well. And then not only that, at one point in the comic books, he actually became Sorcerer Supreme, which ties into Doctor Strange, which could perfectly be placed in into the fourth uh, no, the third uh, movie for Doctor Strange when he has to try to stop these incursions so I could see him coming to uh, Doctor Voodoo to have to deal with him. And I could see Giancarlo being this figure that people look up to and everything like that. So I could see him playing it. Now, on the, on the, uh, the con side of it, not a strong character to give to such a high-level actor. Um, but this is just somebody I could also see being placed within the MCU where it currently is now. Um, another pick that I have now, this one is just a, it's a favorite of mine, but I do not see it happening. So let me just start off with that very much. So, and that is blue Marvel. I think Gene Carlo would play a dope ass blue Marvel. I think I could see him playing a great blue Marvel um, just because of how the character is made, how the character, what the character represents. Um, I know a lot of people have uh, uh, also fan cast Will Smith to play this character, but I can see Gene Carlo uh, being able to portray this character. Now, why I say it isn't a realistic choice right now is because there isn't anything established enough for Blue Marvel to be put within this MCU. Um, it would take a lot for them to have to put in pieces to establish him as Blue Marvel. And right now, with everything that they have put out, there is nothing that would connect Blue Marvel. And the closest thing that might have been that was Guardians of the Galaxy, but we don't have them anymore. So I don't see them immediately looking to Blue Marvel within the multiversal saga or even the next saga, if I'm being honest with you. Um, I, don't, I don't see really Blue Marvel coming up like that, except if you do maybe a... Marvel Presents, 
or something like that, where you give him like an hour long special, as opposed to like Dr. Voodoo, who has already had to deal with one of the people in the Marvel presentation, uh, which was Werewolf by Night, because he's also included into that storyline as well. But Blue Marvel is kind of a stretch, but just because I am a fan of him, I'm a fan of Anti-Man, uh, his villain as well, I wouldn't mind seeing him portraying Blue Marvel. Uh, but again, like I said, I know it's a it's a long shot. It is a long shot. Uh, now, of course, my other one that I, I, I select, Dr. Doom. Victor Von Doom himself. Now, I know what y'all saying. Like, well, Will, you just said you can't change people who have their own history. Hear me out. The reason why this one could potentially work. One, it's overseas where uh, uh, Victor receives his fortune. So his father could be Lithuanian and he slept with a woman who, uh, who has a darker melanin features, which is why you have Jean Carlo. And the only reason else why this works in this particular character is because of who they cast as Mr. Fantastic, and that would be our boy Pedro. So this is why I would say he could play Dr. Doom. Now, again, not my top choice for Dr. Doom, if I'm just being honest. I don't see him playing Dr. Doom in the top choices of when you have so many other people. And then another thing, too, of I don't want to see Gene Carlo wearing a mask the entire time. So that is another reason why it's like, I like the way it works. I, I like the aesthetic of, again, I think he could play a phenomenal villain and I think he would pair well against Pedro. And I think having a more older Dr. Doom works a little bit more that carries himself and everything like that. Like think of just like Jean Carlo from Far Cry 6, that type that is, and then loses all of that stuff. I could see him playing this Dr. Doom phenomenally. But I will, again, like I said, as far as Dr. Doom selections, I put him in top five, but not top three. But as a part of my top five selections of who you could cast him as, just based off of how the MCU is going. Now, here's one that's going to kind of throw y'all off, I think. Uh, my next choice, Kang the Conqueror. Kang the Conqueror. With, look, with Jonathan Majors out, come on. Come on. You can't tell me you don't see it. And I'm talking about the Kane the Conqueror that you see in the image right here. Blue mask barely takes it off. That Kane the Conqueror. You cannot tell me you don't see him playing this multiversal type. I think Gene Carlo would make a great Kang the Conqueror, uh, taking out Jonathan Major's entire lineage and then being the real Kang the Conqueror, really altering. And then again, they put it in the perfect spot because of what happened with Loki. Loki making the tree and he could completely alter all of reality, being that this Kang could be completely different. But I think he would make a great Kang the Conqueror, even in size, because we got to remember too, um, he's not a huge person. He's he's really someone you can't beat up. It's because of the powers and technology he has that makes him a great threat. But one on one combat, like man, that mean he like Kang get his ass whooped. Kang is it, it, it was bullied before he became Kang. So I could see it. I can see them using CG to make him young. Uh, uh, because he is a little guy and Nathan is technically a little guy. So I could see him playing and replacing Jonathan Majors as Kane the Conqueror. And it being an older version too. And I could feel like, I feel like that version makes me more believable of like the line Jonathan Majors used. You're an Avenger, right? I've killed you before. You can see Giancarlo being more menacing as he says that or even being able to go back as Ramatut. And like we said, like with CG, you can make him look young. 
and certain like past uh pretenses and stuff like that as you see him portraying now. So that's why I, I put him at that. That is one of my top three in these top fives. If we had to categorize it from worst to the best selections, Kang is like in my number number uh one or number two slot. But you know it kind of moves between the two. And then my last selection. My last selection. I know y'all, I know people are gonna disagree with me when I say this. Mr. Sinister. Mr. Sinister. Look, now I know people are gonna disagree because of size. Now I'm gonna I know they're gonna disagree because of size, because Giancarlo is not a big person and Mr. Sinister is. Mr. Sinister is like six foot something. Um, and I can see why y'all would say that, but, but because of how Hollywood is set up, we know a lot of these actors ain't tall and you recall how they did apocalypse apocalypse was in the the movie, not a tall man at all. Um, so I could see him playing this. I can even see them CGIing up. Uh, his body, muscle suit and stuff like that. Thank you, uh, Tetsuya. Uh, a muscle suit. CGI in it just a little bit. But I can see him being this person who has experimented on mutants, who has used it on himself to become this sinister being that has been behind a lot of the stuff that has happened with the X-Men. We already know that he plays a phenomenal villain. So just imagine him taking all those years of what we've seen him do and embody it into one of the most fucked up characters within the Marvel, uh, all of Marvel existence. This is a fucked up individual, okay? Mr. Sinister ain't shit. Like, this, I, man, I don't even know what to compare this dude to. This dude, this dude needs some pussy. This dude need a hug. This dude need therapy. This dude needs weed. This, this dude needs some heroin. That's what he need. He need to mellow the fuck out because this guy is ridiculously like his name is perfect for him. That man is sinister to a T and said, put some respect on my name and throw a mister in the front. Come on. Come on. You can't tell me. You can't see Giancarlo playing this man. But that is my top five selections for Giancarlo to play within the Marvel Universe. Just to go over it again, I got I got brother slash Dr. Voodoo, Dr. Doom, Blue Marvel, Kang the Conqueror, and Mr. Sinister himself. So those are my top five selections with Giancarlo. And with that, that brings us to an end of this episode of Straight Out of the Comic Book. Listen, I hope y'all enjoyed today's episode. For those that join me on the live on my Twitch, I appreciate you coming through. Folks like Tetsuya, D-Wise, King Michael Hall. Of course, my boy is a nut. My boy is a nut. Shauna, uh, uh, Shauna uh, was also up in here, so I appreciate y'all coming through. Um, Ice Water Will 252, thank you so much, man. I really do appreciate that. Believe me, um, I know it may not have shown, but... um, This is a little difficult for me, you know, kind of just stepping out, doing it by myself. I normally like to do things as a team um, and whatnot, but I really want to try to step out of the shadows and be able to just really like, you know, when you say me, you just think of me. Um, And I think it is time. uh, So it's just, you know, I decided to take that leap and just let it be myself, build it outside of just playing video games on Twitch. And so y'all that have joined me on here, I really do appreciate y'all with the feedback. Let me know that this what y'all did enjoy seeing this and stuff like that. I really appreciate it. We'll still keep having guests on here and stuff like that too. So uh, Ice Water will, you know, you know that, that may actually happen, but I will have episodes where we will have guests, but I like that y'all did enjoy the solo dolo. So because of that, I can produce more episodes out. I got a lot of friends that I enjoy having on here, but they have busy lives. Um, they have a lot of stuff they're doing and they're flourishing very well. Um, so I really appreciate y'all um, enjoying this episode like this of me being solo. So you will get more, which means you will get more episodes on a more consistent basis since I can do this by myself. So I really appreciate y'all rocking with me from beginning to now. 
Um, and we're going to keep this thing pushing. Um, so I definitely uh, thank y'all for joining me. Uh, thank you for checking out this episode of Stride of a Comic Book. Let me know in the comments below how uh, you feel about Deadpool and Wolverine getting ready to drop. How you feel about X-Men 97. Uh, how you feel about the boys coming out this summer. As well as watching the Knuckles. And my top picks for Giancarlo joining the MCU. Um... And so, yeah, thank you. Make sure you like and subscribe to my channel. Uh, Strat of a Comic Book will be coming back to my actual YouTube channel. So the episodes will drop on my YouTube channel. We'll have a snippet of it on Arcade Tokens that'll lead you over to watch the full episode on my channel moving forward, as well as the audio version on all podcast platforms. So I'll be updating those to where it is con a concur uh, current excuse me, with uh, everything. So... Make sure you keep checking it out. Then keep rocking with Stride of a Comic Book on my YouTube. Uh, also checking out being here on Twitch as well. What up? Uh, shout out to Zero. Uh, we'll be having um, more Twitch streams as well. So, of course, my Wednesday Grand Theft Auto, The Fleet. We'll be doing those on Wednesdays. Cooking up some Stir Fry Fridays with Sly Cooper. Um, and then as well as jumping back on Twitch to jump into some gaming, wrestling talk, and everything like that. So I appreciate y'all checking it out, checking out today's episode. Uh, WWE Backlash is on, so I got to go rock and check that out right now. Um, so I'm not going to hold anybody uh, else up. Have an amazing Saturday, wherever you are. If it is cloudy outside, if it's sunny outside, go take a drive. Go eat your favorite meal. Have your favorite snack. Do something for yourself today. I'm sure you did an amazing week and you deserve it. So make sure you go take care of yourself today. I've been your host, Will Farrell. Thank you so much for checking this out. And I will catch y'all next time. Peace. <laughs>